this was Mars, as it might have appeared billions of years ago. A thick carbon dioxide atmosphere cloaked the planet, maintaining warmth and moisture. Abundant rivers meandered across its surface, with much of the northern hemisphere submerged in water. Yet all of this was destined to vanish, leaving only imprints on the rocks. It is believed that Mars' weak and unstable magnetic field failed to protect it from the solar wind. Over hundreds of millions of years, the atmosphere gradually collapsed, causing water vapor to break down into hydrogen and oxygen. The lighter gas rose to the upper atmosphere and escaped into space. Meanwhile, the oxygen interacted with the rocks, gradually covering the planet with a layer of rust and sand. Today, all that remains of the once abundant water on Mars is a thin layer of orange dust and permafrost. To understand the current state of Mars, it is necessary to look into its interior. For four years of studying the internal structures of the celestial body with the help of sensitive seismographs, scientists have gained insight into the processes occurring under its surface. At the very center of the planet, we can observe a large and massive core of iron, sulfur, and nickel, exceeding half the radius of the celestial body with temperatures ranging from 1800 to 2000 Kelvin. The tremendous pressure within Mars has rendered much of its core solid, incapable of generating a stable magnetic field. Surrounding the core is a layer of molten mantle, approximately 1,500 kilometers thick, with a composition that varies with depth. Lower layers contain metal oxides, while upper layers are composed of olivine and silicates. Beyond the mantle lies a substantial crust, with an estimated average depth of about 50 kilometers. Remarkably, this thickness is 10 times greater than Earth's oceanic lithosphere and rivals the depth of Earth's continents. Notably, in the Northern Hemisphere, Mars' crust is primarily composed of andesite, while in the Southern Hemisphere, it consists mainly of basalt. This suggests differing formation periods. A decade of observations has yielded hundreds of thousands of images of the Martian surface. As a result of a combination of observations, scientists have compiled an extremely accurate and complete map of Mars, including many objects. Some of them are quite small, while others extend for thousands of kilometers and are visible even in ground-based telescopes. Among them stand out the Mariner Valleys, a vast network of intertwining canyons and chasms stretching along the equator of the planet for a huge 4.5 thousand kilometers. Its western part is deeply cut into the vast volcanic highlands of Tharsis, and we will begin our exploration of this colossal rift near the center of the vast plateau. This is home to a mysterious and peculiar region known as the Labyrinth of Night, occupying a huge space of 1,200 kilometers from west to east. It is characterized by chaotic topography, here, numerous deep chasms with steep edges cross each other, dividing the planet's surface into irregularly shaped blocks. The upper parts consist of softer and lighter sediments that have undergone considerable erosion, while the base is hard bedrock. Over the course of a billion years, the slopes of the abyss have collapsed in several places, leaving a trail of numerous landslides. This area is believed to have once served as a reservoir for ancient precipitation that fell on the highlands and then flowed eastward in powerful torrents. Evidence supporting this notion is found in the signs of deep water erosion present at the base of most crevices, as well as in the layered composition of slopes and landslides. Furthermore, spectral analysis reveals the presence of specific minerals, such as hematite, opals, and iron sulfates, which typically form in the presence of liquid water. Periodically, the labyrinth of night is blanketed by dense fog, signifying that it remains one of the planet's wettest regions. It is conjectured that the water contained in the soil evaporates into the Martian atmosphere during the day, while the towering walls of the chasm trap the moist air. As temperatures drop, the water condenses into microscopic ice crystals that gradually settle on the surface forming a delicate layer of frost. Toward the east, the intricately intertwined crevices of the labyrinth of night 
gradually transform into a system of massive canyons, intermittently intersecting each other. Over billions of years, powerful water currents have carved deep channels in the Martian rock, and subsequent winds and sandstorms have eroded their slopes. Whatever route is chosen, it eventually leads to the grandiose Cuprates Chasm, marking the deepest point of the Mariner Valleys and located 11 kilometers below the surrounding plateaus. Calculations show that in ancient times, this gorge was a long, narrow, flowing lake at its peak comparable in volume to the Earth's Black Sea. This region seems very promising for future research, as the soil at the bottom of the chasm may contain traces of ancient microorganisms, and its slopes provide a geologic record of the planet's history, which is of considerable scientific value. Continuing along the canyon, its steepness gradually decreases, passing into the gentle Chris Valley. However, even here, traces of the water element remain in the form of rounded terraces and elongated islands, probably formed by sedimentary material from the Mariner Valleys. Similar geologic formations are found on Earth in the deltas of large rivers, such as the Amazon or the Nile. Thus, we have encountered one of the most impressive and compelling pieces of evidence for the existence of water in the ancient history of Mars. Yet, the immense expanse of the Mariner Valley's rift has only been explored from orbit. No rover has ever ventured into it. To gain a closer perspective on the Red Planet, we must journey eastward, covering several thousand kilometers across rugged, inhospitable, rocky deserts. Eventually, we arrive at a substantial crater known as Gale. Approximately 3.8 billion years ago, a colossal asteroid struck this area, leaving behind a deep, rounded depression spanning 154 kilometers in diameter. Nestled within this crater is Mount Sharp, a sprawling, irregularly shaped plateau comprised of sedimentary rock layers. It is believed that in ancient times, a sizable circular lake with a central island existed in this location. Presently, the Gale Crater is renowned as the landing site for the Mars rover Curiosity. The mission's tale commenced nearly 11 years ago when the autonomous research vehicle, Curiosity, touched down on Mars' surface on August 6, 2012. The mission's objectives encompass the investigation of Mars' climate and topography along with the quest for water and potential traces of biological life. Almost immediately after landing, the rover yielded evidence that Mars was significantly wetter in the past. The initial images transmitted back to Earth distinctly revealed a valley shaped by the flow of water, subsequently named Peace Valley. This discovery stands as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of water erosion on the planet. Curiosity then journeyed eastward, reaching a sand pit known as Rock Nest. It collected its first soil sample here and found that it contained approximately 3% water. Subsequently, the rover turned southwest, navigating the rugged badlands of the Glenelg region, where relentless winds had weathered sedimentary deposits down to bedrock that formed over 4 billion years ago. Occasionally, it scaled rocky slopes, eventually arriving at the western end of the Bagnold Dunes. While studying relatively recent sedimentary rocks in the desert, the rover Curiosity transitioned southward toward the Vera Ruby mountain range, characterized by a shift from sand and silica to hematite, an iron oxide that forms in the presence of liquid water. This composition suggests a once wetter climate in this region. In total, Curiosity's mission exceeded 3,000 days five times its initial duration. Despite numerous challenges, it traversed nearly 30 kilometers of Mars' harsh terrain, collecting 28 samples of Martian soil. Chemical analysis revealed not just water, but also organic compounds, including benzene and aromatic hydrocarbons. The rover's cameras provided a wealth of photographs and videos. Leaving the indefatigable rover, we head southwest to the Hellas Plain, one of Mars' most extensive impact craters. About four billion years ago, a colossal asteroid with a radius of about 50 kilometers collided with the planet at tremendous speed, 
This catastrophic event created a huge crater about 2,300 kilometers long, in which millions of tons of rock were crushed and scattered over a great distance. Perhaps some of these fragments flew into space and subsequently fell to the surface of the planet hundreds and even thousands of kilometers from the collision site. It should be noted that Mars was probably more favorable in that era than it is today. Consequently, the huge depression formed by the impact quickly filled with water, resulting in a large lake or a drainless inland sea. Over billions of years, it gradually shoaled until it took its present form. The crater is over seven kilometers deep. From a distance, it may seem that the bottom of the basin is flat and even. But this is an optical deception. In fact, it is decorated with numerous small hillocks and fractures formed as a result of the movement of underground ice layers. Such relief is reminiscent of the Earth's Arctic regions and permafrost zones. Because of the considerable depth, the atmospheric pressure in this area is about twice the average for the planet. This increased pressure leads to the occurrence of unusual weather phenomena. Periodically, a foggy haze unusual for Mars, forms over the crater. Although the wind disperses some of the haze from the basin, it quickly dissipates into the rarefied atmosphere or settles on icy rocks. During the Martian winter, the Hellas plain is completely covered in hoarfrost, forming a large glowing spot visible from the ground. Due to its peculiarities, the region was long mistakenly considered to be an upland area. It was not until the end of the last century that its true nature was accurately established. The next point on our route is to the north, the Jezero Crater, which was once a significant actively flowing lake. Water from the north, carried by the Savoy River, and from the west via the Naretva River, filled this Martian site. Traces of these significant Martian waterways are still visible on the surface showing up as layered deposits of river sediment and extensive erosion areas on mountain walls. One such region was the primary target for the Perseverance rover, which descended into Jezero Crater on February 18, 2021. The rover was originally scheduled to land in an area known as the Three Forks in the Neretva River Valley. However, weather conditions forced a change in the landing site shifting at 1.7 kilometers to the southeast. The rover was separated from its intended target by a strip of impassable sand dunes known as Itok. It was in these conditions that the remarkable Ingenuity helicopter made its first landing. While flying over the Martian surface, Ingenuity provided a comprehensive panorama of the ancient delta and captured a unique image of the Kodiak Plateau located just 2.3 kilometers from the rover's landing point. After the rover had settled in this new location and surveyed its surroundings, it embarked on a challenging journey to circumvent the inhospitable desert that lay between it and its intended destination. This mission truly showcased the advances in technology and human determination. Heading south along the edge of the Cetas, Perseverance intermittently paused to collect soil samples. Meanwhile, Ingenuity conducted a series of sorties, offering us a previously inaccessible perspective through numerous Martian photographs. On the 168th Martian day, the rover turned west. The plan was for it to follow the crater's bottom, circumnavigate the southern tip of Cytac, and then proceed northward along a rocky ridge to reach the delta. Nonetheless, the terrain presented challenges and the rover was compelled to retrace its steps, almost returning to its initial landing area. Perseverance then redirected itself toward its objective, skirting the northern edge of the desert and gradually veering westward. After an arduous journey, the rover did ultimately reach the delta and commenced its exploration in April 2022, marking 413 Martian days since landing. Perseverance has now covered over 18 kilometers of the harsh Martian desert. It has gathered 15 soil samples and supplied more than 166,000 images, along with gigabytes of data from various sensors. Furthermore, the MOXIE lander, part of the rover's scientific payload, successfully extracted approximately 100 grams of oxygen from the Martian atmosphere's carbon dioxide, 
opening up possibilities for future colonization efforts. Simultaneously, Perseverance's seismographs detected several Mars tremors, contributing to a better understanding of the planet's internal structure. The Ingenuity helicopter played an equally important role in this mission, making more than 50 flights and covering a total distance of more than 8 kilometers. This clearly demonstrated that even in the Martian atmosphere, flying vehicles can be used for scientific research. In addition to surveying desert landscapes and rocky terrain, Perseverance periodically turns its cameras to the Martian night sky. For example, one of the white dots in the night sky is the moon Deimos. And more recently, Perseverance recorded Phobos eclipsing the sun for a moment. This unique observation was not only a spectacular sight, but also provided important data for astronomers. Unlike Earth, Mars has two moons, both small and irregularly shaped celestial bodies. Observations and spectral analysis suggest that Phobos and Deimos have a composition similar to carbonaceous asteroids. Nonetheless, the precise origin of Phobos and Deimos remains a topic of scientific debate. One hypothesis posits that they are remnants of a small celestial body captured by Mars from the primary asteroid belt several billion years ago. Mars's tidal forces likely fragmented this object into numerous pieces, with Phobos and Deimos being the largest among them. Another theory suggests that during the early formation of the solar system, a sizable protoplanet collided with a young Mars. This cataclysm ejected some fragments into space, where gravitational forces eventually shaped them into two relatively large objects. Among Mars's moons, Phobos is the larger one orbiting above the planet's equator at an altitude of about 6,000 kilometers, which is roughly 64 times closer to Mars than the Moon is to Earth. In comparison, some Earth satellites orbit three to five times higher than Phobos. Despite its proximity to the surface of Mars, Phobos appears to be about three times smaller than our Moon, emphasizing its diminutive size. Another striking fact is Phobos' exceptionally low average density of about 1.9 grams per cubic centimeter, suggesting that up to 40 of its volume may be empty space. It is likely that Phobos, like some asteroids in our solar system, consists of many fragments held together solely by gravitational forces, under the influence of tidal forces. Under the influence of tidal forces, Phobos is gradually losing height at a rate of about 1.8 meters per 100 years. It is estimated that in 10, 11 million years, Phobos will succumb to the gravitational pull of Mars and disintegrate into numerous fragments. These fragments are predicted to collide with the surface of the red planet in about another 33 million years. By this time, Mars will likely lose its second moon, Deimos, as well. Currently, Deimos moves in a circular orbit with a radius of about 23,500 kilometers. But this distance is gradually increasing. Calculations show that in a few million years, Deimos will be out from under the gravitational influence of Mars and will be in free space. Deimos is an extremely dark object, absorbing almost 93% of the light that hits its surface. Because of its small size, its disk cannot be seen with the naked eye from Mars. To an observer, Deimos appears as a point of light, albeit quite bright. Because of the peculiarities of its orbit, it appears to be moving across the Martian sky toward Phobos. But this is just an optical deception. In reality, both satellites orbit Mars in the same direction. Watching Mars as if frozen in time it is difficult to imagine that once on its surface flowed turbulent rivers, the likes of which may not exist on Earth. The vastness of the red planet is still full of mysteries and surprises, many of which we have yet to discover. While it may seem that the history of Mars has long been written, human persistence and curiosity can still open a new page in this cosmic story. Each of us has the opportunity to contribute to this endeavor whether it's by actively participating in space exploration or by a humble like below this video. It is thanks to your support that this video will be seen by millions of people, and there is a good chance that some of them will open new frontiers of the universe for us.